Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the brand new Razer Kishi 2 Android controller. So if you're not familiar with these controllers, this is a telescopic USB Type-C controller for your Android device, and these are definitely some of my favorites. You can always buy a $4 clip on Amazon for your Xbox, your PS5, or your PS4 controller and just mount your phone in it like that. But I've always been a big fan of these telescopic controllers because it kind of gives you that handheld console feel once you mount your device inside of it. So a lot has changed with version 2 of the Razer Kishi, and we'll get to that in just a second, but I did want to mention that my go-to controller right now has always been the original Razer Kishi. If you're not familiar with this, it's actually a great controller, it comes in a bit cheaper. It's a USB Type-C controller with kind of a flexible back on it, you just mount your phone right inside of it. It holds it just fine, but there are a few devices that I have that don't fit in here very well, like the Red Magic devices, at least the newer ones from the 6 all the way up to the new 7 Pro. And when it comes to my iOS devices, I've actually been using the Backbone for a little while now. It's a great controller when it comes to an iPhone. It's got a lightning port and this expandable back. Some manufacturers do call these stretchy controllers, but I've always called them telescopic controllers. And when it comes to the Backbone, this is definitely one of the best controllers you can get for your iPhone right now. And it looks like Razer has actually taken some key features from the original Kishi and the Backbone and kind of melded it together for version 2. And to tell you the truth, I love the look of the new controller. Like I mentioned, there are some key features that have changed here, and some people might not be happy with them. Mainly, when it comes to the D-pad, instead of using a conductive pad behind it, they've actually swapped over to micro switches. But as you can see, we've got this solid back slider here, which does make the controller feel a lot more sturdy once your device is inside of it. And it's definitely a lot sleeker than version 1. It's got analog triggers, some people call them linear triggers, and I'm really glad they didn't swap this out for just a single micro switch. And it looks like more devices will fit version 2. It does come with these two extra little uh, spacers. These are a lot thinner than the rubber ones that come pre-installed, and you can swap those out. So something like the Red Magic 7 Pro will fit in here once you replace the rubber spacers with these thinner units that come along with the controller. But yeah, we've got the same basic layout. We've got a D-pad, we've got two analog sticks. We've got our home button, back button, start, select, A, B, X, Y. There's also a screenshot button. And up top here, we've got our shoulder buttons, our analog triggers, and they've added two extra buttons up top, and these can be mapped from software. They've also added some grippier texture on the back here, which does feel really nice. It's on both sides, so it's not going to slip out of your hand easily. And down here, we've got a USB Type-C port for charging your phone up while it's in the controller. And real quick, I wanted to test if it supported fast charging. So what I've got here is the Red Magic 7 Pro. This will do up to 120 watts fast charging. And you can see my watt meter here. 75 with the charger I have. So it'll do 75 watts just over USB Type-C. Unfortunately, the Razer Kishi 2 doesn't support fast charging. We can get up to around 12.5 to 13 watts out of it, which is more than enough to play your games and keep your battery charged at the same time. But it would have been really nice if it did support fast charging. I wasn't expecting 120 watts, not even 75. You know, even 25 watts would have been nice here. And another thing it doesn't support is data over USB Type-C while your phone's in the controller. As we saw, the controller does come with some thinner spacers, and something like the Red Magic 7 Pro is just a thicker device, so it doesn't fit in here properly with the rubber spacers installed. The rubber ones come pre-installed on the device, and as you can see, there's a little gap there because it's got that rubber spacer. But these are easily replaced with the thinner spacers that are included. We'll do the USB Type-C side first. They just pop right out. They're actually in here pretty good, so you're not going to lose them, you know, if you don't have your device in here. they got these two little clips on them. But we'll go ahead and swap these out for the thinner spacers. So yeah, with these installed, the thicker gaming phones will fit in here. As you can see, it does fit under that lip, and now we can plug that USB Type-C all the way in. Really glad to see this. Okay, so first things first, I wanted to tackle the D-pad. Like I mentioned, they're using micro switches here instead of a rubber conductive pad like you'll find in older controllers and newer controllers. Personally, I'm a huge fan of using those rubber pads. It just gives you that good feel. But what they've done here with these micro switches does work out really well. It's got a little bit of a click to it, but it's totally usable here. And it's raised up a bit, so it is easy to pull off these special moves. 
Right now, I'm using the Redream emulator with some Dreamcast here, Marvel vs. Capcom 2, and pulling off these special moves is super easy with this new D-pad. If you've only been using conductive pads on all of your controllers, there might be a little bit of a learning curve, but it does work, and we're not working with a retro-inspired controller whatsoever. Obviously, it would have been nice to have that rubber behind it, but unfortunately, they didn't go that route. Razer has also released a new application alongside of the Razer Kishi V2, and it's called Nexus. You can download it for free from Google Play. It's like a little launcher. I mean, all of your games can be loaded up right here, all of your applications, really. They've also got some suggestions for games. We can go into the settings and update the firmware for the controller. I'm on version 1.0. That's all that's out as making this video. We've also got this record button, and we can set it up for screenshots or screen recording. It's really up to you. This device here that I'm using right now has a really nice screen recorder built in, so I'm not sure how much I'm going to use that button. But we can also map those M1 and M2 buttons up top here by the shoulder buttons. So we can set these up basically any way we'd like. And we also have a dedicated home button. Now, if you have Nexus installed, it'll bring you into the Nexus app really quickly. You press it again, it'll bring you home. But if you don't want to install Nexus, it's just basically an Android home button. Next thing I wanted to take a look at were these triggers. And I'm just using a gamepad tester. As you can see, these are linear triggers. So when it goes up to one, we're fully depressed. But for racing games, this works out really well. And I'm going to test that in a second. But we've got full control over both of these triggers, and this does work with the Game Pass app. So one game that I usually love playing is Forza Horizon 5. And for drifting and stuff like that, you know, having that control over the gas pedal and the brake pedal is really awesome. So these aren't just on or off, you know, it's not just zero throttle or full throttle. We've got a full range here. If you're an Android user, you know there's a ton of games on Google Play that do support several different types of controllers. Like Minecraft here, we've got Asphalt 9, Real Racing 3, there's a lot out there. But then you'll get into some games that only support certain controllers, like Call of Duty Mobile and Apex Legends. And unfortunately, you can't use this controller without a third-party mapper with those games. I was really hoping that would be fixed by now, but it really comes down to the app developer. They only support the PS4, PS5, and Xbox controller for some odd reason. But with a third-party app like Mantis Buddy, you can use this with any game from the App Store. One of the main use case scenarios that I would have for using a controller with my Android device is emulation. What you're seeing on screen right now is LaunchBox, a front end that you can just set up with all of your games. You can download videos, artwork, and just have all of your retro games and emulators in one place. And as long as the emulator supports a controller, this thing's going to work with it. With PSP, using PPSSPP, I didn't have to do any mapping. Same thing with EtherSX2, I just used the auto binding. And yeah, it does work really well with these emulators. You also saw some Redream for Dreamcast at the beginning when we were testing out the D-pad. But here we have some PSP using PPSSPP, and it worked right out of the box. I didn't have to do any mapping. When it comes to something like EtherSX2 for PS2, I use the auto binding feature, and it just automatically set up the controller for me. It works great with PS2 emulation. So far, I personally really like the new Razer Kishi V2. I'm glad that they added a solid back here. Now, I did get used to the stretchy band on the original Kishi, but this does feel a lot more solid once you have your device inside of it. Unfortunately, it still doesn't support fast charging or quick charging. And like I mentioned, I don't need 120 watt fast charging, but, you know, at least 25 watts would have been really nice. Plus, having data support through that USB port would have been really, really great. That way you could plug in some USB Type-C headphones because the way this is set up right now, you're really not going to be getting to the 3.5 millimeter audio jack on 99.9% .9 of the devices you're going to put in this thing. And I completely understand that using micro switches in that D-pad is going to be a deal breaker for some people, but you know, I'm so used to using all kinds of different controllers. I got used to this really fast and it does work out really well the way it is. But so far, it's actually been a really enjoyable experience using V2. Now, the biggest downside to this thing is the price. It's coming in at $99 right off the bat, 
And we saw this same thing with the original Razer Kishi. It was either 89 or 99. I mean, that's definitely close enough, but it's still pretty expensive for a controller that you're going to be using just with your Android device. But keep in mind, for like the last nine months, the V1 was down to around $45 on Amazon, and I think we'll kind of see the same price drop on this later on down the road. I don't think it's going to be anytime soon, but you know, give it six months from now, you might be able to pick this up for 50 bucks, and it would be well worth that. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. If you're interested in learning more, maybe picking one of these up, I will leave a few links in the description. You can get this on Amazon right now. If you got any questions about V2, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.